that was the Shotish from the popular Brazilian suite or the suite popular Brasiliani by Villa Lobos. And I'm using this piece today to talk about uh, the technique of left hand shifting. Um, it's a piece that I teach a lot and it you know, really jumps around and asks a lot of your left hand. So I thought we could go through just the A section of this piece and I can explain how to sort of prepare for these shifts and just shifting in general. Okay, so let's talk about the shifting. Um, actually, right off the top, we've got this little 16th uh, note figure, and then it moves right into this downbeat on measure one. So, what we need to do is get from fourth position here to this chord here in, in first position. So, how do we do that? Well, um, one of the very first master classes I ever played in uh, when I was a teenager was for David Russell, who's um, you know, still one of my all-time favorite guitar players. And I don't remember anything else from the master class other than just being really scared um, because it was David Russell. Um, but he said, for shifting, wait until it's almost too late. And that just really stuck with me um, all these years. So that's what I do. I wait until it's almost too late, and then you just fly to the next chord. Okay, so moving as quickly as you can. Now there are a couple of easy little exercises that you can do, um, you know, if you don't know this piece, that you can, you can you know, work on here with me right now. Um, the simplest one I can think of is, is, is this. If you just play like a little chromatic scale on the first string. So just go up one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you'll be in four positions. You'll be in the first position, you'll be in the first position, and you'll be in the ninth position. And here's what you want to think about. So as you're moving up, three, four, you want to look at the fret you're going to be bringing your first finger to. You're just going to fly to that fret. And what you want to look out for, there are a couple of little you know, traps that, that people sometimes fall into. One is to cut the note before a shift short. And let me demonstrate. You don't want to do this. So what's going on there is you're nervous about the shift, so you cut the note because you're, you're, you're already thinking about the next note, but you're not finishing the last one. Um, and that does not stick with the concept of wait until it's almost too late. You're leaving way early. So you want to leave at the last second, just like that. Now there are two other things that you know can potentially go wrong here, um, probably more than two, but these are the most common. Um, the next is not lifting up your fourth finger before you move to the first finger off after the shift, and you get this sound. Now there are some shifts. that is actually really cool and it can be a musical thing to do but you don't want to have to do that you want to do that only if the music um, you know makes it appropriate so look out for that that little extra slide there um, and the last thing you really have to look out for here is some people they over accent the note right at the arrival so they do this And, and for some reason, I often see the people who do that also, they get their head involved, so they do this. Right. So that's, that's a really labor-intensive way of making a shift um, to, uh, well, to, you know, to just steal ideas from all sorts of other guitar players. Um, let me give you one that Scott Tennant told me. 
And uh, this, is, this is a really good trick. I use this one with my students and with myself all the time. Um, I remember I was playing a piece, um, I think the little, uh, the, uh, the marble variations, the first, first variation, I think, from that. You have this little scale in there. And I would always blow it. I'd always, you know, get nervous on that. And I'd always bear down like that. And he just suggested, well, you know, lean back instead. Make it, make, you know, your body language a little bit more relaxed when you play that. So maybe on a shift, you kind of lean back and it kind of sends a cue that maybe it's not so hard as opposed to, you know, bearing down like that. Because that's just, you know, you're telling yourself it's difficult and, you know, you tighten up. It's not a good thing. Um, okay, so let's go back to the, to the piece here. So we've got that first shift. Then we've got to get back to fourth position um, from, from the chords down here. So we have, oops, uh, and then all the way up to ninth position. So let's, let's work all that stuff out. So we have this little E major chord, a little walk down. Then we've got to get back to fourth position right away. You don't want to let anything go. I'm keeping the G sharp down here with my first finger. Right back to the chord. So you don't want to go. You don't want to cut it, you know, short. You also don't want to over accent when you get there. It just needs to be smooth. Now here's a bigger shift. So you're moving up to that right there. So you're coming from second position. That's pretty tricky. Um, so from here, I'm thinking about my second finger. Now you can't really use a guide finger, but look what I do. My second finger is lined up because I don't need it to play this, this chord here. So I'm lining up my second finger already with the second string. And then as I move up, I'm gonna get that 10th fret on the second string with my second finger that was already in position. Um, too many players do things like this where they'll play and maybe they're middle fingers down here or you know sticking out you know something like that don't want to do that it's not very nice either um, keep it in position over the string so you're, you're preparing it and then you've got this other little back so then you have that little walk down there and it's the same thing just as you move down um, you've just got to wait until the very last second uh, before you move down um, and then I think the most uh, challenging uh, shift possibly in the piece, it's after this section, this is also in the A section. Well, there's that one. This one's a little bit different um, because there's the hinge bar that you also need to, to pull this one off. Um, so I've got my E major chord here. And then, then the notes are F sharp, and then you have to be ready for a full bar here with the C sharp and the G sharp fourth position. Well, it's no good if you do this. And then play that F sharp like that, and then you have to fly into this bar that makes the shift even more difficult. Um, if you're not familiar with this technique, it's a good one to know. It's something called a hinge bar, and you could do this. So I'm not putting the full bar down, but I'm just using the, the bottom part of the finger there. Um, this is this is in position now, and then I just put that bar down when I get to the fourth uh, fret. So it's kind of a cool little thing here. So again, a nice little technique to know, but that's not the challenging one. Just wanted to point out that little hinge bar. Here's the challenging one. All sorts of difficulty in there for sure. So let me just break down that last little section for you here and then that's the end of the A section. So we've got this chord here to the E sharp there and uh, back to a lot of interesting chords in here. So now you have to fly up and get that C. So that's, that's pretty challenging in itself. Right there. And then we've got this D sharp on top. And there, you know, I said not to choke notes, but you actually, you know, it actually is musical here to play those staccatos. So that actually makes the shifting a little bit easier. 
it'd be harder if it was. That wouldn't even be musical, so you don't want to do that. So here's the little shift. So look at the C here, and then bring your first finger to it. And then my pinky is in position to play the D sharp. And then I bring one and two, play those chords, the little E major chord, from fourth position to second. So there you have it, um, the, the left hand sort of in a nutshell uh, for the A section of the, the second movement of the Sweet Popular Brasiliani by, by Villa Lobos. Um, hopefully you found uh, this helpful. Um, and like I said, you know, it, it, this isn't just applicable to this piece, but you could go through you know, any number of pieces. It's really hardly a piece where this wouldn't apply, I suppose, um, if you had a piece where there were no shifts at all, but uh, there, there aren't too many of those. Um, so, good luck, uh, and uh, I, again, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you in future videos.